Hello, friends, and welcome to the Friends in Fiction show, Behind the Book, with four New York Times bestselling authors and endless stories. I am Mary Kay Andrews. And I'm Meg Walker. And on behalf of Mary Kay's co-founders and co-hosts, Kristen Harmel, Christy Woodson-Harvey, and Patty Callahan, Callahan Henry, we are excited to welcome you to a special episode of Friends in Fiction Behind the Book, a, quip, a quicker deep dive into the life and work of one of our very favorite authors. Yes, and today I am so thrilled. We are thrilled to welcome my dear pal, the number one New York Times bestselling queen of contemporary romance, Susan Elizabeth Phillips. I hope you'll notice that I dress to match nice. her jacket, as all the cool girls do. <laughs> Susan, guided by the motto, life is better, life is better with happily ever after. She loves writing about love and all its forms and is credited with creating the sports romance genre. And we are so excited to talk with her about her new novel, Simply the Best, the latest book in her fan favorite Chicago Stars series, which was just released on February 13th. Okay, so you're there. You? <laughs> Hi, we're so happy to have you. Um, I am so happy to be here. You guys work so hard. I'm just lazing around in Southern California, letting oh, sure. you do all the work. <laughs> That's it. Rub yeah. it in. Laying back. Right. And I didn't wear green. Didn't even occur to me. See, this is why you're a much better marketer than I am. Do you call, <laughs> let me ask you this, Susan. Do you call home to Illinois every Sunday like my aunt used to when she'd come to Florida for the winter? Every Sunday she'd call home and she'd say, oh, I'm so sunburned. It's 86 degrees here in Florida. Oh, you had a blizzard. Oh, so sad. <laughs> do you do that? Um, it is 70 freaking degrees in Chicago right now and 60 degrees here. That ain't <laughs> I'm right. I'm so bitter. Oh, the <laughs> irony. Having, like this unbelievable warm weather. And, you know, Southern California is not Florida in the summer. I mean, in the winter. It's it's yeah. a little chillier. So, yeah, I have resentment. Good. <laughs> All right. Well, back to your book. Give us the ele elevator pitch. What is Simply the Best all about? Simply the Best. So the hero is this super successful shark of a sports agent. Winner take all, failure is not an option. But the heroine is a failed chocolatier who's grown up in the shadow of her very successful younger brother, who's also the agent's most important client. The two of them are going to get into a lot of trouble together. Um, and some of it is kind of a mess, I have to say, but, uh, it's, it's a love story, but it's also <clears throat> a story about success and failure and what it means to be simply the best. We also have a nice secondary love story going on with an older couple, which I love to write. Don't always get the chance to do it, but that was really fun to do. So it's, um, I think the book has a lot of heart to it. It's also funny and... Miss Mary Kay Andrews, I pulled off a mystery, woo, woo, which as you <laughs> might know, is not my strong suit. <laughs> I think your strong suit is anything you attempt, Susan. Okay. <laughs> According to the New Wall Street Journal, the queen of the football romance is not Taylor Swift. It's Susan Lissa Phillips, our own SEP. How did it feel publishing a football romance into this crazy Taylor and Travis time at the time of the Super Bowl? right at Valentine's Day to boot. I mean, it feels like a perfect storm. It was a perfect storm. I am so invested in Travis and Taylor, <laughs> but I have to point out they're copying me. I came first, <laughs> right? Did you see the pictures of him when his brother announced his retirement and he's sitting there, he's crying and he's got all his friendship bracelets on his, his wrists. I mean, how many ways do we love this guy? I know. He's if so we popular. wrote if if we wrote him, no one would believe him. I know, I know, but the, oh, I wish I'd thought of the friendship bracelets. That's such a cool touch to give to this really macho hero, you know. Yeah. All right. So now, how do we get a book into Taylor's hands? And are your people working on this? <laughs> I didn't even think about it. <laughs> See, <laughs> remember, I told you you're the marketing person. Me, not so much. I didn't even think about yeah. it. You don't have to be, because you just keep writing those books and don't worry about it. You know, one thing about Simply the Best, it's the 10th Chicago Stars novel, but I make sure that absolutely everyone stands on its own. You can jump into this series any place you want. And uh, I, I think that's really important to give a, to give, have a complete book with the series so that you can, you can just enjoy wherever you are. Right. Get them hooked on this one, then they can go to the backlist. 
Yep, for sure. We really hope that happens, right? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, talk to us about Rory and Brett. Rory is oop, Rory is the sister of Clint, your hunky quarterback in your previous Chicago Stars book, When Stars Collide. How did you conceive of these characters and what makes them tick? Well, you know, when I when I'm thinking about a book, I'm always looking for a Chicago Stars book if I can come up with it. I do standalone books too, and I was kind of committed when with the previous book, Clint Garrett is the backup is is the starting quarterback and a secondary character in my book When Stars Collide, which is the one about the backup quarterback and the opera diva. She's number one. He's number two. He's always been number two. And Clint is the actual starting quarterback. He's a young guy. I don't know, 24 years old. And um, when he's when I put him in that book, I knew that I was committing to writing his story. But by the time the book was done, he was too young. I was, you know, I'm not going to write a story with a hero that young. So I kept thinking, what would it be like to grow up in the shadow of this sibling who did everything right, who was the golden child, while you just had one failure after another? And that was the seed for doing um for doing simply the best and coming up with Rory. And I think it makes it even worse that he's her younger brother. And uh, honestly, I cannot remember. I've been asked this before. I have no idea why I ended up making her a chocolatier. I don't remember. But I discovered discovered something interesting. I only like cheap milk chocolate. I am not. The people who rave about fancy chocolate and gourmet chocolate and dark chocolates. I would rather eat a Hershey bar. So this was my my big discovery when I was working on, on, on this book that I'm not a fan of, of, of chocolate. In terms of the hero, obviously, if the heroine fa- is a failure, the hero has to be super successful. And I'm writing this guy, and I'm looking for what is the key to this guy at the beginning of the book? And I realized, oh, he's an asshole. Okay, <laughs> that gives me something to go on. I mean, he <laughs> is so driven. And he just thinks you try hard enough and all the pieces are going to fall into place. But we know in life, it doesn't always work that way. Mm -hmm. So they were just such a fun couple to put together because talk about different value systems. They've got it. And I love that in a romance. I love that um, the clash of opposites. That's my favorite. I always write that. That's my favorite thing to write. And then put them on their journey toward discovering their better selves. And they can discover that individually, but best of all with each other. Well, that's the key to an SEP. Right? I'm always going to write that. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, you're known for your wit and humor. And as anybody who's read you can attest, your dialogue always just sparkles. How do you work those laugh out loud moments into your manuscript? Are you laughing when you're writing? Every yeah, every once in a while when it just kind of pops out, I'm I, you know I I don't pre-plan very well, and I hear the dialogue in my head, and you mm-hmm. know sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't. But you know I think in terms of when you're writing uh, comedy, um, and again that's not all. I I try to I we have serious moments in the book and we have funny moments. I think you either can do that or you can't. It's sort of. Um, you know, you either are a snarky person like me or you're not, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I think if you try to dissect it, then you kill it. You you yeah. really do. You do. And also, I think for writers, you have to remember that slapstick doesn't translate nearly as well on the printed page as it does visually. So trying to make slapstick into humor can be a little bit tricky. Now, I know you're a great walker and a great hiker. Do you come up with stuff while you're walking and hiking? No, I'm too busy trying not to fall. Oh my gosh. I had, <laughs> I had the worst hike last weekend down into a canyon. It was all I saw rough. the pictures of you crouched over. It, the wind was blowing 60 miles an hour. I hit oh. a ridge line and I was on my hands and knees crawling, saying, Why am I doing this? And I scared my son out of his mind. It was a debacle. I hit my limit last weekend. Maybe just flat little hiking trails for you. 
<laughs> little <laughs> cinder paths. <laughs> Loose walking. And I have a stick that I walk with. So when I'm on the ridge line, I'm crouched over to make myself a smaller target for the wind. I got the stick out in front of me, all hunched over. So I look like I'm 110 years old as I'm crawling on the ridge line. It was just awful. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> All right, so let's talk more about the Chicago Stars series as a whole. Um, am I correct that you are not really that big of a football fan? I like, I really, I'm a fair weather football fan. I, of course, we follow the Bears, uh, Chicago Bears, but I like um, toward the ends of the season, all the championship games when you see the really good players. I love it. The Bears were so bad this year that we switched over to Kansas City. Uh -huh. I just love Mahomes. I love watching him, I, just watching a great quarterback. So, yes, I am a football fan, but I don't follow every game obsessively from the very beginning. I leave that up to my husband you know you have defined roles in a marriage that's his um and and you mentioned already that that the books i know what was the first book in the series was it fancy pants no it had to be you fancy pants was the first sports romance and it was about the most boring sport in the world which is golf oh. it, <laughs> A good old boy, Texas golf pro and, and the society, uh, this is the, the bell of British society. So again, it was opposites attract. That was, as far as I know, the first, first sports romance, but it had to be you as the initial book in the Chicago Star series. That was published, I think, in the early 90s. And I, I love that you said that they're all standalones and don't have to be read in any particular order. So people can dive in wherever they want in this. Absolutely. And they don't have a cliffhanger at the end. I got this thing about cliffhangers. I don't like them. I want a resolved story. <laughs> yes. I, good. Thank you. As a reader, I think we all appreciate that. Um, right, right. So when you said that you're always um, on the lookout for another Chicago Stars idea, so are are there future installments in the works? Yes. Uh, my, my next book, the book I'm working on right now, Clint is finally old enough to have his own story. And I'm working on that right now. I just work. I love that. You had to let him marinate a little, right? Yeah, he had to get he had to get older. Um, am I allowed to ask a question? Of course. Yeah. Mary Kay, what is you know, I am such a fan of your work. And let me tell you why. I know you're going to give me a, a, a page turner, but you're not going to keep me up at night with nightmares. And the color and the landscape you write against with with all of the neat settings, I just love it so much. So can you tell me a little bit, because I don't know anything about the new book. It's coming out in May, right? Yeah, it's called Summers at the Seine, and it takes place at a very high-end exclusive resort hotel on the Georgia coast. And it's inspired by, by a real, very exclusive resort on the Georgia coast. And it's about a, 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 a young widow. Um, um, she goes to work at this resort at the age of 19 and catches the eye of the, of the good son and they fall in love and marry. And then 20 years later, he dies in a plane crash and she's running the resort by herself. The resort is the St. Cecilia. And now stuff is happening. She can't find enough staff to open for the summer. Her evil, nefarious brother-in-law is plotting to take over. Um, and so that is, it, you know, it's it's a book about um, belonging and longing to belong because she started out as an outsider looking in. And then it's a book about um, belonging and longing, I think. Oh, it sounds so good. Thank you. We'll make sure you get a copy. Oh, you know, you believe it. Pre-order, people. I'm pre-ordering. Um, <laughs> you know, those pre-orders mean a lot. I think readers don't understand that sometimes that affects the print run. So, yeah, um, yeah this is on my pre-order list. Thank you. You're too kind. All right. Now, I can't look at this book cover because I got to show it again because I match it <laughs> without, without hearing Tina Turner belting out. I know, books. right? <laughs> now, did you did you have that song in mind when you decided to call it Simply the Best? Because I know uh, no, not, not really. It was just it was so much like Brett Rivers. Everything has to be the best. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it did pop into my head at that point. Uh, I didn't have the title right away, but but I eventually got it. And it just was absolutely perfect for the book. I yeah, really now you've it. had other books named with song titles, Light My Fire, Had to Be You, Dream a Little Dream, This Heart of Mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there a method to this earworm madness or is it just something that comes over you? 
Yeah. And like, uh, sometimes I struggle so much. I struggled with when stars collide. I knew it, it had to have stars in it because that was the whole thing about not only Chicago stars, but being a superstar. And, oh, I had the perfect title for the book, Star Wars. And they wouldn't let me use it. I can't believe that. And I think it might have been you. It sounds a little, little trouble with, with search engine. And then right after with stars, Star Wars, I realized I couldn't do then uh, when stars collide came along. Um, but anybody wants to throw out a title for the book I'm working on now, that'd be just great. You know, I, I listen to the oldies on my, on uh, Sirius on my, in my car all the time. And I'll hear a great old song title from the sixties and I'll think that's, that's the title. That's a title. And then, you know, the next song comes on and I, I have forgotten it. So I don't I know. know. <laughs> and and you also, know, Mary, Higgins Clark, Mary Higgins Clark used to use a lot of song titles. Yeah, she did. But from and, the forties. Sometimes if you use a really old song title, it kind of it doesn't, hit right with with our younger men, millennials and gen Zers. Right. so you've got that but yeah um, it's always when you do find a sign a song title that works it's like a gift totally yeah absolutely well you guys there's obvious chemistry between the two of you i think readers are really fascinated by author friendships so i'd love to know how the two of you how long have the two of you known each other and how did you first get connected and what do you think makes you click with one another well, well i think that Right. I stalked you at a um, Romance Writers of America conference. I would go sit. She would always do these great um, panels with a couple of her buddies. And I would sit in there and think, okay, someday that'll be me. Someday that'll be me. Someday uh -huh. that'll be me. And I think I kind of slithered up to her and said, I, I love your books. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Go away. I can't be bothered with the little people. <laughs> You know, we've known each other for a while, but then we, we, when you come to Anderson's, we usually yes. get, to get together then, and right. we've done some some um, signings together, which is which is always fun. Yes. It, I just miss the days of RWA when we knew we could see each other every year. Definitely, so, and you 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 know the 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 best stuff always happens in the uh, conference hotel lounge. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Always. In other words, the bar. Yeah. <laughs> that's where you get that's where the tea is spilled <laughs> but you know sometimes you meet a writer that you just really connect with personally but you don't like their work and then you feel guilty and horrible and that did not happen with us oh, no. because yeah. I was just so cra cra crazy about your work from the very very beginning and uh it's just uh, it's really fun watching our friends do so well and another yeah. sidebar here is those of you the Doing friends in fiction, I don't think readers know how much work that is for you guys and how generous you are pulling all these writers in. It's just really, really wonderful. And I appreciate it. And I know so many writers do. And thank you on behalf of all of us. Oh, well, it's a it's a labor of love for all of us. And it's on done labor. <laughs> no, no, we get to suck up to writers whose work, you know, we genuinely genuinely enjoy. And also to meet um, folks just coming into the business who who um, are going to be huge. I mean, they're on the way right now, um, but it, that's kind of a fun thing yeah. too. Very fun. All right. Well, the three of us had a great time last uh, spring in Chicago. I recall spending time in the basement of Anderson's with the two of you, um, uh, re recording a series of snappy videos uh, about all things Christmas. Um, so for our audience out there, I'd love to do that now and focus on romance instead. So let's right. do a little lightning round. Um, I'm what ready. is the first romance novel you, re you remember reading? Uh, for me, it was Dragonwood by Anya Seton. I think it was The Mistress of Melon. Um, Victoria Holt. Victoria Holt. Yep. Yeah. Which was, you know, a, a gothic. Oh, oh, but, right. oh my God, I, my sisters and I loved devoured them. them, right? We love them so much. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Who is your all time favorite romance author? I hate this question. Oh, you do? Uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to say when Jenny Cruzy is, is right on that sweet spot. Nobody writes snarky dialogue like she does. There are so many, but Jenny's just been on my mind lately. 
you know, I gotta, I gotta agree. Um, when I started, you know, I started writing mystery and when I, uh, wrote Savannah blues, my editor looked at me and said, um, you wrote, you, you didn't write a mystery. You wrote, you know, kind of a rom-com women's fiction. And um, yeah, Jenny Cruzy was sort of the gold standard for mm -hmm. funny, heart-filled uh, romps. Smart. She wrote yeah. smart too. Yeah. Right. Uh, Tell Me Lies, I think is my favorite of hers. I loved that book. I just loved all of them. Yeah. My favorite line is one of those books she, she and the hero have, have, had sex and he looks at her <laughs> and he said well how was that and she says something about uh uh you didn't stick the landing yeah. <laughs> that might have been faking it it might have i bet it was yeah, yeah. welcome That's to funny. temptation and some of those early silhouettes oh my gosh they were just perfect yeah Jennifer definitely Cousy. yeah definitely all right uh name a recent book any genre that you cannot stop raving about Oh, for me, Lady Tan's Circle of Women. I did not want to write, write read that book. I did not read, want to read a book set in 1400s in China. I just, that opened a whole new world to me. I learned so much. I really, really adored that book. I love that. We've had Lisa C. on Friends in Fiction. She was great. Yeah. I know yeah. you did. Yeah. I got to say, thank you for listening, uh, Julia Whalen. Uh, Meg and I had the pleasure of meeting her and doing an event with her when I was out in California. Um for um bright lights big christmas and it was i just had a total fangirl moment i'm like it that is a gold to me a gold standard uh romance rom-com it's really well done yeah. i yeah. listened to it on audio and obviously she reads it because she's the cream of the crop as far as narrators and she yeah it's just a marvel like how she does all those voices every dialect Scottish, Irish, she does men, she does New York well, which is hard to do. She does Southern well, which is hard to do. I think she's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay, can you name an up and coming author whose work you admire or who you think our audience should keep on their radar? I think um, Mariana Zapata is gonna be an interesting writer. I just met her in, um, in Atlanta a few weeks ago. She's writing, uh, she wrote a book called The Wall of Winnipeg, which is a sports romance. She does this slow burn thing. Um, oh my gosh, she describes every muscle the hero has in, in terms <laughs> of pure romance. I think she's gonna be really fun to, to watch, Mariana Zapata. And, you know, I loved Annabelle Monahan's um, Same Time Next Summer. Um, we had her on Friends in Fiction, um, what, back in the fall? Yeah. And I, she's got a new one coming out, and I cannot wait to get my myths, myths on it. I think she does really great. She does really I'm great. writing this down. Yeah. Um, okay. Same Time Next Summer. She does really great banter and heartfelt and it, you know, it isn't all, it isn't all um, lollipops and sun drops. It's, there's some dark stuff in there too, but she, I, I think she's so talented. I really love her work. All right. And do you have a favorite book of each other's? Uh, for me, the book I really discovered you with was Savannah Breeze. And I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say it's my favorite book because I really love Newcomer. I really loved Homewreckers. Um, and your little Christmas book was was dear. But you always remember that book where you really discover an author's voice. And uh, so Savannah Breeze was the one where I discovered your voice. Okay, Susan, which one is the one where the protagonist is walking down the street wearing a beaver costume? Natural Born Charmer. <laughs> That's my favorite. It wasn't often a guy saw a headless beaver walking down the side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> Natural Born Charmer. Definitely. I wish I could do an opening line like that every <laughs> book. <laughs> I got I got to agree with you. <laughs> All right. Mary Kay, you're up. Oh, I thought we had. No, nope. you skipped a question. I, I skipped a couple. I just thought. Oh, you okay. We kind of covered some of the some of our oh, okay. questions in the previous conversation. So I skipped ahead. I think okay. she's telling me to shut up. No, I'm not. She, <laughs> she would not do that. She yeah. has to do it very frequently. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Susan, this has been so much fun. Tell our audience where they can find you online so they can keep in touch and follow all of your hijinks. You can find me on Facebook, although I understand Facebook is down today. Um 
at uh, Susan Elizabeth Phillips. My website, susanelizabethphillips.com, SCP author on Instagram. I don't do TikTok very well, so I wouldn't waste my time there. And uh, just, but I do love chatting with author, with readers and having that kind of community. Well, I know that they um, love doing that with you too. They love connecting with you. Yeah, your social media is great. I love the both the both of you keep your social media so fresh and it you can really sense your real personality through there. You're not just using it as a promotion megaphone. For better or for worse. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah, the picture of the picture of you crouching on the ridge oh. was priceless. Not a oh, lot God. of writers would have done that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Susan, thank you so much for being such a wonderful guest. We hope all of you watching will go out and grab your copies of Simply the Best. And one place you can do that is in the Friends in Fiction shop on bookshop.org, where all of your purchases support our show and our beloved indie bookstores nationwide. And all of you out there, don't forget to tune in every Wednesday night here on Facebook or YouTube for a brand new, longer form content about the books, authors, and the reading and writing worlds. You can find everything about the Friends in Fiction universe from the live show to the podcast, the newsletter to in-person events, information about how to purchase our guest books to updates from the Friends in Fiction of Friends in Fiction official book club on our website, friendsinfiction.com. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you Thank next you. Time. Thank you both so much. Thanks, Thanks Susan. Susan.